If you're trying to access data related to your liquidity positions with code, you need the token IDs for those positions. We can see the token ID up here for this position. And while it's easy to see that in the UI, I've been asked a number of times, how do we get those token IDs programmatically? Because the function to get a liquidity positions data requires a token ID. This is the positions function on the non-fungible position manager contract of Uniswap. And the easiest and fastest way to do this is with the subgraph. But as a rule, I don't want to do anything manually. I don't want to come to this UI and run this query myself. Automate, automate, automate. Let's write some code to pull position IDs. And then we'll pull information about them from the non-fungible position manager contract. Start by importing Axios. We'll use this to make requests. Then we're going to need the URL for the subgraph. And we can get this from the subgraph documentation. Just scroll down and copy that GraphQL endpoint. Import.env. because I have my infer URL, which we're going to need stored in my .env file. Now let's write that GraphQL query to get token IDs from the subgraph. We'll pull, we'll pull token IDs for a specific owner, a wallet address, and a specific pool. So we're going to pull data from positions where the owner is a specific address. And I don't know who this person is, but we're going to pull some data about their positions. And we want to pull it specifically from a pool. You don't have to filter by pool here, but I'm going to do it just to show you how. And there's lots more interesting information on the subgraph about liquidity positions, but we're just going to pull the ID and the owner. Now let's create a main function so that we can use async await, async function main, open that up, and let's make a request to the subgraph. So we will assign the, well, what comes back to a result variable, we'll do await, Axios dot post. We'll pass in that subgraph URL. Then we'll pass in our query with the key query. It's shocking how just simple and straightforward this is once you know what you're doing. And then we're going to parse the results, which are nested several layers deep. So we'll do const positions equals result dot data dot data dot positions. And then I'm going to console dot log these and make sure this works before we go any further. So I'll say node and my file is called get liquidity positions dot JS. Let's run this. And nothing came back because I didn't actually run the main function. So let's add a call to that at the bottom of the file here. And actually this needs to be double quoted or it's not going to work. And here we have data about positions for this owner in this pool. So they have three liquidity positions and these are the IDs. Obviously they all have the same owner because we filtered by that. If you find the video you're watching helpful, do me a huge favor. Scroll down to the thumbs up, give it a click, and then hit subscribe. It helps keep me motivated to keep making awesome and in-depth blockchain tutorials to help you out. 
Now back to writing code. And now that we have the token IDs, let's use the non-fungible position manager contract, the contract I showed you the docs for in the beginning, to pull data about each of these positions. First, we need to import a few more packages here. So we're going to need ethers. We're going to need my infer URL, which I've stored in my .m file, process.env.infer URL. We're going to need a provider, new ethers.providers.json RPC provider. Pass again that in for a URL. Then we're going to need the ABI for the non-fungible position manager contract. And we will assign it to this variable. And I'm just going to paste this in because it's long. Then we're also going to need the position manager contract address. And that should be all we need. Now let's initialize an instance of that non-fungible position manager contract. So const non-fungible position manager contract equals new ethers.contract. And we will pass in the address for that. We'll pass in the ABI for that. And we'll pass in our provider. Then let's loop over the position data that we pulled and pass it to a function on that contract. So positions dot map each position, we'll just call it P here. And then we'll do non-fungible position manager contract dot positions P dot ID. And then when that returns, we'll take the result and we'll console dot log it. Let's fix a spelling mistake I have up here. There should only be one equals. And let's give this a run. So we printed our three position IDs as before. And then we called the positions function on each of them and pulled a whole bunch of data about each of those positions. One, two, three. You can see there's some big numbers and hex values in here that are not human readable, but if you parse this and convert it to a number, then it will be a value that you can look at and understand. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe. I will see you all next time.